like to talk today about uh, different dynos and uh, the differences that they can produce for different bikes. Now recently I saw a vlog where a guy brought it to a high-end uh, performance shop, uh, a few different bikes, and one of them was an R1 where I've read between many different publications and anything that I've been able to find those bikes, the new R1, produces 160 to 165 horsepower. This performance shop's dyno said it was 183 or somewhere in that area, so a good 20 horsepower over. They also did a ZX10, the new generation, and again that was like 183, um, which I'm guessing is going to be realistically 160 horsepower because an H2 was also dynoed and it said that that one made 213 horsepower and everywhere else I've read it's about 180 to 190 horse. So that being said, this same guy said that this performance shop broke his bike in in one day and this uh, Sport Rider publication says that uh, some light period is required to break an engine in properly. Um, the seal between piston rings and cylinder wall, while this area is also subject to high spots and some light running time, more important is the long term seal between the two. A good ring cylinder seal keeps the compression ratio to the, what the manufacturer intends. Stops combustion gases from getting into the crankcase, oil getting into the combustion chamber, and in general provides better performance and fuel economy. High load, higher load during break-in period puts more pressure on rings to improve sealing characteristics of the piston rings. Advocates of the hard break-in is usually looking for tight engine seal for good performance and are not so concerned with long-term aspects, meaning longevity of the engine. Uh, and they go on to say this might be like a race bike, something that gets rebuilt every season or something like that. Um, the various bearings and internals mating to the surfaces um, need sufficient low load and low RPM running time to bed in. High spots on bearing surfaces and other machining imperfections can cause increased friction and excess heat until this happens. So some period of light duty is required. <clears throat> when you break in an engine, it's important to not keep your throttle wide open for, or not wide open, but uh, constant throttle for extended periods of time. That's probably one of the most important things to break in an engine. Um, so don't do 50 miles at you know 4,000 RPMs or 8,000 RPMs or whatever it is. Um, people say that that's where twisties come in handy because you're on and off the throttle a lot and that's the best way to break an engine in. Also to let an engine cool down in between, like really cool down, not just five or 10 minutes, um, is also a big consideration. So I, I think that that process is probably not a very good one to break in a brand new engine, especially something like an H2 in one day. Um, so those are things to consider when you read these dyno numbers. Like I've said before, do your homework and look for many sources because when like the R1 first came out they were saying you know 200 horsepower and maybe it is close to that at the crank but this is rear wheel horsepower um, and I am a, not surprised but a little disappointed with the new Kawasaki because they said that that was going to produce close to 200 horsepower as well and obviously it doesn't because it was actually a little bit lower than that R1 by like three horsepower or something and again I would guess that that's you know producing pretty much the same as the old generation you know from 2011 to 2014 or 15 uh, ZX10 which is uh, about 160 to 165 horse so that being said 
you know, once again, uh, try to figure out and I'd also say read your owner's manual because that's going to give you a pretty good indicator of how to break in your engine, whatever it might be. But they're all basically the same, you know, for the first thousand miles, don't do over 8,000 RPMs and whatever. Um, and up to your first oil change, whether it's 400 or 600, uh, you know, I would say don't put it over 8,000 RPMs for sure, especially for an extended period of time. Unless you are looking for that quick break in and you're not planning on the bike lasting as long um, and you know once again trust the pros trust the guys that uh, do this for a living and have bikes handed to them uh, and there you go I want to once again talk about uh, Australia I've been seeing on the vlogs a lot that uh, helmet cameras are now illegal I guess in all of Australia, I'm not sure, but they say it messes with the integrity of the helmet, so it's like a $300 fine and three demerits rather than points. Um, so that's something that's probably going to be uh, something to be aware of all over the world. And also the new European emission standards, the reason Ducati had to do the twin pipes off the new 959 and um, a lot of stuff. I was just reading uh, in my cycle world that uh, the future for air cooling might be coming to an end because those stringent emissions can't be reached with an air cooled engine. So that'll be a sad day when that happens. Another interesting tip uh, or discussion from my motorcyclist is motor racism and that is you know, guys who don't like anything except Harleys or Cowie guys who don't like anything other than Cowies. Um, but it goes further to talk about these new motorcycle companies that uh, are made where a lot of bikes from the big manufacturers are pretty much all made now. Um, places like Korea and China and things like that. Um, so I was wondering how you guys feel about that sort of thing. Do you automatically, you know, disregard a motorcycle simply because it's not one of the, you know, Japanese big four or, is this, you know, whatever whatever brand you're, uh, you know, more kind to? And uh, why is it that you're like that? The uh, electronic suspension age definitely is upon us and what do you guys prefer a suspension that's fully adjustable with your own hands or would you prefer a suspension even if it didn't cost extra that was you know the bike took care of whatever conditions you were riding in for you and do you think that's possible that the uh, you know bike can be that good uh, I personally would rather be able to adjust things myself because I kind of don't want a suspension to change when I get it in that spot just because like I've talked about a lot uh, muscle memory um, you know when I get a bike to handle a certain way that's the way I feel like my body knows it's going to handle so and the fact that realistically you're never going to get a suspension that doesn't cost a lot of extra with electronics thrown at it, um, you know, by the tune of you know three to five thousand dollars. Also, uh, big thumbs up to uh, the new Suzuki. That new 1000 Jixer looks very nice. I really like the front end of it, and I hope that that's a bike. They haven't given any power numbers. And I haven't seen any power numbers for the Kawasaki legitimately for the ZX-10, the 16 model. Um, but I am relatively certain that that bike is going to fall short of what they were saying, that 200 horsepower mark. And uh, I hope that the Suzuki will live up to it. They're not saying that it's going to make that much horsepower, so maybe you know this one really will. Now the BMW and the Aprilia, um, the RSV4, um, that 
those bikes, I guess, really do make 199 and 201, respectively. So, you know, it is possible. It's not a matter of emissions. It's a matter, I think, of the manufacturer and, you know, for whatever reason, not giving it to us. But I think for, although I have seen the new Kawasaki ZX-10 for under $15,000. So, I don't know if this was just what the dealer was selling them for or what. Um, also, the uh, new R1S, I don't like the idea of that. I would definitely rather pay, uh, you know, the $1,500 more um, because it does, the engine internals are made out of cheaper materials and heavier materials. It also doesn't have as high of an uh, rev range instead of like uh, 14, it's 11.5 or something like that. So just for those few things alone, I would definitely rather you know spend the spend the money and get the better bike. Now I would not rather have the uh, M with the electronic suspension for the reasons that I gave. <laughs> Some more information: uh, motorcyclists tested the WD40. Will it destroy any type of uh, chain theory? And it will not. Um, also. I see guys going to like car washes and using a pressure washer to wash their bikes. That's like the worst thing. Even your owner's manual will say do not use a high pressure system. Even with a hose, you know, with a spigot or putting your thumb over it, you shouldn't do it. Um, it just blasts into all those places that are supposed to stay sealed. And, uh, you know, that's, that's good advice. Don't use pressure washers and WD-40 is fine for your chains.